Good morning, or afternoon, I guess. <laughs> I just want to remind everyone to please turn off your cell phones. Okay, we're going to start with today's agenda, July 11th, 2023, 1.30. Items on the agenda may be taken out of order. The board may combine two or more items for consideration. The board may remove an item from the agenda or delay discussion relating to an item at any time. No action may be taken on any matter not listed on the posted agenda. All planning and zoning matters heard at this meeting are forwarded to the Board County Commissioner's Zoning Commission, the BCC, or the Clark County Planning Commission, PC, for final action. Please turn off or mute all cell phones and other electronic devices. Please take all private conversations outside this room. With the 48-hour advance request, a sign language interpreter or other reasonable efforts to assist and accommodate persons with physical disabilities may be available by calling 702-455-3530 or TDD at 702-385-7486. Or relay Nevada toll free at 800 326 6868. Supporting material provided to the board council members for this meeting may be requested from Tammy Harris at 702 298 0828. Supporting material is also available on the Clark County Department of Administration Services. Supporting material will be available on the county's website at clarkcountynv.gov slash Laughlin TAB. Okay, I'd like to call the order. We're gonna take a roll call. Uh, Herm Walker? Here. Kathy Oates? Here. Fred Doton? Here. Pamela Walker. Here. And myself, Kathleen Haas, we're all here. We also have with us Tammy Harris, and we have Mark Moxowitz. Okay, at this time I'd like to do the pledge. If you can all stand. Pam. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Section two, public comments. This is a period devoted to comments by the general public about items on this agenda. No discussion, action, or vote may be taken on this agenda item. You will be afforded the appropriate, the opportunity to speak on an individual public hearing item at the time they are presented. If you wish to speak to the board about items within this jurisdiction but not appearing on this agenda, you must wait until the comments by the general public. Period listed at the end of this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Please step up to the speaker's podium, clearly state your name and address, and please spell your last name for the record. If any member of the board wishes to extend the length of the presentation, this will be done by the chairperson or the board by majority vote. Okay, session three. We would like to combine three and four together, and can I get a motion to approve the minutes from June 13th and today's agenda for July 11th? So moved. I have a motion, second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, moving on. For our informational items, we will receive a report of updates from the South County Liaison, Mark Moskowitz, regarding updates of the Laughlin Residential Road 
rehabilitation project and any other updates for Clark County. Perfect, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to give a continued update on our Laughlin Road residential uh, rehab project. It's going along well. Um, please just remember if you have any questions to contact our office. We're here all the time. Um, call or email us. We had someone reach out regarding a question and we were able to coordinate with the contractor. So um, everything is going along fairly well. I know we're getting into the summer season, so um, it will be warm around the sites when they're paving. So just be aware of that and make sure you're checking your door hangers to know when stuff's gonna happen in front of your property. Um, let us know though if you have any questions or any concerns or things that are going on. Um, we're here to help with that. So. Other news is, I just want to wish everyone a belated uh, July 4th. Uh, it was a good time down here. Um, I know we had, Endow gave me some information about the water. It was a, um, you know, an, no incidents that were, uh, happened on the river, which is good news for us. And just to remind everyone to keep wearing your life jackets through the remainder of the season and always. So, um, and then the last update is I have Commissioner Naff's uh, July newsletter. Um, it's in the back table. This is always a great resource to find information that's going on in the county and Laughlin Searchlight, all the areas in Clark County. Um, please let us know if you'd like to be on the electronic version of that or um, if you'd like it to get a hand copy and get it at our office as well. And other than that, that's with all my updates. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> um, item number two for informational is the Rotary. They will not be joining us today. So we will move on to three. We receive a report from Lieutenant Rogers with Metro Police. Thank you, uh, board members. Pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm just going to go over our stats really quick for last month. We had a very uh, safe and successful June. Uh, record low temperatures here, so we've appreciated that. Uh, a little bit of extra rain. So for the month of June, for uh, two, 2023, we had 311 calls for service, uh, only five more than last year, so it's a 1% difference, which is so very similar. Uh, things are going well. Things are very consistent here for us in Laughlin. Uh, my officers are doing a good job uh, here in Laughlin on the uh, freeways around here. Uh, we wrote 221 total citations, uh, one of those resulting in a DUI. Um, as far as arrests for domestic violence, we made three arrests uh, and bookings here at the Laughlin Tucker Holding. We had 28 total bookings. Uh, two citations were written for juveniles, um, and we didn't have any calls for service at the um, high school. Um, on some other notes, as far as community events, tonight is our snow cone event. So I know I said it last month, and it's all over our social media. So we're hoping to have a good turnout. Uh, thank you to Mr. Bill Bray and his uh, gas stations. They donated, donated the ice to us, so we'll have a good 20 bags of ice out there. It will be hot, but that's why we're doing snow cones. Um, it's, it is our first event besides National Night Out that we're doing after work hours. Uh, most of our coffee with a cop has been done. Uh, during the day. Um, the turnout hasn't always been the best. We're hoping that with this uh, occurring at five o'clock that we'll have a pretty good turnout with the community members. Uh, just so everyone knows, it is at the Laughlin Community Church, 20, 2910 Needles Highway. So today at 5 p.m. Uh, and then on a side note, one of my goals when I first got assigned here uh, to the wonderful Laughlin station uh, was to get us a school police officer. I did meet with the superintendent and the chief of police for school PD. Uh, and the good news is we do now, starting the first day of school, we will have a full-time school police officer here. Uh, he's coming down tomorrow for a little meet and greet and to meet uh, Principal Estes. So um, it's been some you know, good phone calls and help, help from Mark and from other community uh, members that uh, um, it'll alleviate a little bit off of my officers uh, to be more into the community. And he'll be there for the school and for the kids and be in the hallways and be in there every day. Uh, so that's kind of a good, a big win I feel today that I got some, some news of. Um, other than that, that's all I really have. Um, we'll have another uh, back to school event. We'll occur in August. I just don't have the date yet. We're still waiting on some donations for some backpacks and school supplies. Once I have that, then we'll uh, push that info out on our social media. So any questions? Good, good, all right. Just congratulations, that's been many, many years. Yes, since we've had that. Thank you. Uh, perfect. Okay. Well, I will see everyone uh, I actually tonight. have one question yes, for you. Go ahead. Um, for people who are donating, where are you donating it to? Where are you collecting your donations? 
uh, for back to school and stuff, yes. uh, they can bring it here to the substation. substation. We're open Monday through Friday, uh, eight to four would be the best time. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll take anything. We did even the uh, uh, Rotary Club and has made some nice crocheted uh, animals and stuff. So we, we don't turn down anything. Anything we can get, we'll be more than happy to pass on to the kids. Um, and we do have some community members involved with some free haircuts and immunizations and those things. So we're trying to make it a pretty big event for uh, any kids that uh, you know may need shoes, clothing, school supplies, haircut, shots, whatever it takes to get them there for the first day of school. We're going to try to make it successful for them. Okay, thank you. Awesome, thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, we we'll move on to receive a report from Clark, Clark County Fire Department. Fire Department, no name. Okay. Hello, Ken O'Shaughnessy, um, captain from Station 85 up the hill. Um, so June's numbers, uh, Station 76 next door here ran a total of 181 calls. That's down 2.2% from last June, pretty negligible. Uh, Station 85, where I'm at, we ran 81 calls in June. That's actually down 30% from last June, uh, but year to date, we're about 13%. Um, and as with both stations combined, we're about 1.1% down from last year. So it's pretty much average. Uh, those sta the calls next door here, 65 of them were from the engine, 115 were uh, the rescue and the ones up the hill were the only unit there, so all those calls were ours. Uh, as far as numbers go, that's about it. Our boat, I think I told you guys a couple months ago when I was here, uh, it was supposed to be here in July. That's still the, the plan, but with those things, it's equipment and custom builds like that, it could be a couple months off. So we're still waiting on that. Uh, we're excited about it. Um, the jet skis that we have at Station 85, We've got about 80% of the personnel down here trained on them. We have to get to 90 before they can actually go in service. Um, but we've been out there training on them on the river, and we're happy to have those, too. Yep. That's all I got, unless you have any questions. Any questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, number five, receive a report from Steve Parsh from the Clark County Regional Flood Control District. How are you today? Welcome back. Thank you for having me. My name is Stephen Parrish. I'm the general manager and chief engineer of the Clark County Regional Flood Control District. I was asked to provide a little presentation today regarding the Flood Control District, kind of a status update, and talk about some of the projects that are going on here in Laughlin. I have a presentation. There it is. Uh, you can just go to the next slide, please. So I wanted to start off just a real quick overview of what the district is and how we operate, just in case anyone isn't familiar with us. Uh, NRS was revised in 1985 to allow for the creation of a flood control district. Um, the district was then created in 1986 through by county statute through a vote of the Board of County Commissioners. Um, we're a planning and funding agency, so we don't own or operate any facilities <coughs> that we built. We only plan them through master planning and then we fund a capital improvement program to install those facilities. So we work with all the public works uh, agencies including Clark, uh, Clark County here in Laughlin, uh, to provide them funding for the design and construction of flood control facilities uh, here in Laughlin. Uh, to date, countywide since inception of the district, we've funded $2.1 billion worth of projects, um, which translates to about 684 miles of channels and storm drains, and 106 detention basins, like uh, the Heiko Springs Basin that you have here in Laughlin. Next slide, please. We. Uh, Oh, sorry. There you go. I've never been accused of not being heard. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to start over. No. <laughs> uh, we are governed by a, a board of directors. We are a regional agency. We're not a county department. Uh, we are our own agency, a subdivision of the state. So we have our own board of directors. Um, we have two county commissioners on our board. Um, which is uh, Justin Jones and Tick Seegerbloom. Uh, Justin Jones is currently our chair of our board of directors. Uh, we have two members from the city of Las Vegas, uh, Carolyn Goodman and Brian Knudsen. And then we have one member from each of the other four incorporated cities. Uh, our vice chair is Isaac Barone from the city of North Las Vegas. Next slide, please. Um, this is a quick snapshot of our revenue. So we're funded by a quarter of 1% sales tax. Um, this is a rolling 12-month sales tax chart, so every 
every dot you see on this uh, graph represents the sum of the pre previous 12 months of sales tax. So it gives us a good trend on how sales tax is performing. Um, and this is since, since inception. So it starts in uh, February of 1988 up through uh, February of 22. Um, you can see a, a nice gradual uh, slope up on the sales tax with, uh, we got a bump kind of in the middle between 2004 and 2010. We had a kind of an increase in revenue and then the, the recession hit in 2008 uh, roughly and we had a drop in revenues and then it's climbing pretty good up until 2020 when we had COVID and then we had all the closures of course, that affected uh, sales tax. We had a pretty good drop in revenues uh, up until about February 21. And then you see a pretty sharp increase in sales tax from 21 to 22, 2021 to 2022. Um, I don't really know how to explain that other than there might have been pent up demand. I mean, we are in an inflationary period right now. So with inflation, costs go up, which means sales tax goes up because it's a percentage of taxable sales, right? Um, and then we got lots of things happening in Las Vegas with stadiums being built and sport, sports teams coming and that type of thing. So uh, I'm a little surprised how steep that, that line is there uh, between 2021 and 2022, but I fully expect it to <clears throat> kind of level off and start going up more along the trend line that you see uh, in years before that. Next slide, please. So in terms of capital projects, uh, this is county wide. We have 42 design projects uh, underway right now uh, as we speak. There's 11 construction projects um, that's funded. So we could have projects that are being bid or out to, actively out to construction, but we do have 11 funded uh, construction projects. The total contract value for all those projects is $456 million uh, currently. Um, we have spent about $250 million on those contracts. So keep in mind that our contracts are usually design and construction or multi-year. So we can't get everything done in one year. So they, they go year over year. Um, so we have about 206 million left on those contracts to, to pay as those projects uh, continue and get wrapped up. So that's about 2,400 jobs created or sustained uh, as a result of that expenditure. Next slide, please. Um, this is how the, the funding is split between the entities. Uh, so we have six uh, member entities. Um, the percentage of the funding that each entity receives to, pro to program for flood control facilities is based on the need. So it's based on the cost of the facilities remaining to be built in each entity compared to the cost of all the facilities remaining to be built on the master plan. And that gives us a percentage and it gives the, the entities with the most facilities left to build dollar wise the most money in terms of, of programming. And so you can see Clark County's at about 30% right now. Uh, actually, the city of Las Vegas is at 39%. Um, these percentages are revised every five years as we update our master plan for the Las Vegas Valley. We'll recalculate all the existing uh, and proposed facilities and come up with new percentages, and so they'll be revised. Um, so obviously, Laughlin gets a, a, a percentage of that Clark County uh, funding that you see there in yellow. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so let's uh, talk about Laughlin a little bit. Um, so this is the, La the Laughlin 2019 master plan update. Um, we update our master plans every five years, which is a requirement of Nevada revised statute. So you're due an update in 2024. So we'll start working on that probably towards the end of this calendar year and work on it through uh, next calendar year. Um, the blue, this might be a little hard to see, but the blue on this map are existing facilities. Uh, red on this map is proposed facilities that are on our 10-year plan for construction. If it's solid red, uh, that's in the first five years. If it's hatched red, that's in the second five years of the 10-year plan. And then the green uh, facilities are proposed on the master plan, but not yet on the 10-year construction program. Um, so completed to date in Laughlin, uh, almost seven miles of channels and storm drains, which are the blue facilities shown on the map. Uh, you have one detention basin that's completed here. That's the Heiko Springs uh, detention basin. And then there's two uh, small debris basins, one on the unnamed wash and one on uh, the facility that drains uh, near Bruce Woodbury under Casino Drive uh, down by the resort corridor. Um, total expenditures to date, this is just regional flood control district funding, is 15.6 million. So that's uh, the total dollar amount that we've uh, expended here on projects. Keep in mind that Laughlin has actually been pretty proactive in terms of uh, 
creating SIDs and working with the county to get additional funding here to, to accelerate projects. So there's some, been some private funding that's been included uh, to get uh, facilities built here in, in Lawton. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, tenure construction program. Um, it's a, we just approved this 10-year uh, program in June. We, do, we update the 10-year plan every year. So this was just approved, but we're actually going to change it all. <laughs> so uh, I'll explain why here in just a second. But, um, right now, that you can kind of see that basin kind of up in the upper left there. That's the Bridge Canyon uh, detention basin. There's a channel coming out of that going into the blue dot, which is the Heiko detention basin. And then there's kind of a green line coming up from that, which is a diversion structure near uh, Needles Highway that's directing flow into the Heiko. Um, we actually started a pre-design report to look at building that uh, basin that's in the red, the Bridge Canyon, and up, upgrading or uh, increasing the capacity of the Heiko Springs Detention Basin and building that, that Needles Highway facility. Um, that pre-design work is being done now. Um, there's a few things that have happened. First, uh, um, the pre-design report coming, <coughs> is coming back and showing about a $60 million dollar cost for those facilities. And they have to be constructed in a certain order for it all to work. So we need to upgrade the Heiko first, then we need to build the Bridge Canyon second, and then we need to build the, the Needles Highway facility third. And all of that's going to be about $60 million, and that'll take you know years to complete. Um, the other thing that's happened recently is the uh, Avi Kwame monument was dedicated, and that extends over that Bridge Canyon detention basin, the one in the red, and that is affecting our ability to construct that. We're not really sure if we're going to be allowed to construct it on the monument. We're, we reached out to Jackie Rosen's office to follow up on that and see uh, what, what the requirements are to build anything within that monument area. It may turn out we need to, to relocate that basin downstream a little bit, which is going to increase our cost because we'd have to do a collection system at that point to get the water into the basin. Um, so that, that is a, a hiccup. And then the third thing that happened was the storm we had here in March. I'm sure all of you are familiar with that. Um, there was a pretty good uh, storm event that kind of went between Needles Highway. The, the, the storm went between Needles Highway and the river kind of from south to north, and then it kind of turned and went over into Bullhead uh, City, and that storm dropped a significant amount of rain, and it created a lot of runoff that was overtopping Casino <coughs> Drive. It went down through the parking lots of the casinos and had to go between the buildings of the casinos to get to the river. Um, the reality is that storm was downstream of all these facilities that I'm just talking about. and so. Um, with all that in mind, we met with the county and we said, is this, is, is this the best solution for, for Laughlin at this point in time? And uh, the decision was made to, instead of focusing so much on this upper, this, the facilities in the upper watershed, maybe we should be focusing more on this other uh, facility, which is the green kind of uh, aerial facility that you see there right near Casino Drive. That's right near Thomas Edison and right near Bruce Woodbury. There's a detention basin proposed there. If that basin were in place, it would have caught most or all of that water that uh, came down in that storm <coughs> in March 15th, and it would have provided a lot more protection to the resort corridor and to Casino Drive. And so um, the county uh, agreed with that. We met with Dennis Cedarberg, the, the public works director, and he was in agreement. So what we're going to do now is revise the, the tenure plan to focus the resources more on that downstream detention basin. We're, not, we're still going to build the stuff upstream. It's just going to be postponed. We're going to build that in a little bit later. So if we could go to the next slide. I, I zoomed in a little bit on some of this. Uh, click it one more time, please. And one more. Thank you. So that is the Thomas Edison uh, detention basin, we're calling it. It's right at Bruce Woodbury and Thomas Edison uh, Drive, kind of the northwest corner there. It includes uh, what right now it's calling for a levee that it, it extends south of there to collect water that's uh, bypassing the detention basin. It'll divert it into the, into the structure. That may be a channel. I don't know. We'll, we'll decide once we get ready to, to design it. And then there'll be an outfall from that basin that will tie into the existing pipe under Casino Drive and get the water down into the Colorado River. You'll see much improved flood condition here once that uh, structure is completed. So. The design is just uh, going to be kicking off here shortly. Um, the, the, there is a consultant on board with the county 
that was doing the pre-design work for that stuff upstream. We kind of put that on hold. They're just going to button up that study, and then they're going to work on actually a final design for this for this structure. Next slide, please. And click it again, please. And one more time. And so uh, one other project that's going on here in uh, Laughlin, um, this is phase two of the State Route 163 at Casino Drive project. Um, phase one was just built about two years ago, um, which took uh, care of water that was in a wash along the south side of Saint, uh, State Route 163, carried it uh, under Casino Drive and down into the river there. Um, this is phase two, which is at the upstream end of that phase one piece to try to capture some of the sediment. There's a lot of sediment that an erosion that occurs in the watershed here. So there's a lot of material that's getting deposited in the storm drain and it's hard to clean up. So we're going to uh, design a sediment catching catchment here that will uh, allow the, the sediment to drop out of the flow before it goes into that storm drain. And then it gives an easy place for Clark County maintenance to come out and clean that uh, material up after a storm event. Next slide, please. So just uh, kind of a, to sum up, um, these are the projects that are currently on Laughlin's 10-year construction program. It's the State Route 163 Casino Drive project I just mentioned, uh, which is gonna deal with the sediment there on that project. Right now, the Heiko Springs Detention Basin is on the 10-year plan, uh, that expansion project, as well as the Bridge Canyon that's up in the Avi Kwame uh, Monument area. Those are the two projects that are gonna be postponed for the, the time being. There's one other project, the Laughlin Marina to Desert Marina project, which has design uh, in year uh, 26, FY26. So in about three years, we'll be starting design on that, but it is on the 10-year plan. Uh, next slide, please. And this just kind of talks about the changes I mentioned. So we're gonna postpone the Bridge Canyon Detention Basin and the Heiko Springs Detention Basin. We're gonna add that Thomas Edison Detention Basin. There should be uh, funding for that on the 10-year plan with the postponement of those other uh, structures. So we should be able to get a design and get a construction going uh, relatively quickly. It'll take probably about a year to get the design done and then construction will follow shortly after that. And I believe that's my last slide, so I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Excuse me, you need to come to the mic to ask any questions. Chair Haas, I would suggest maybe open it to the board first, yes. and then after that we'll open it to the public and make sure everyone knows they have three minutes to speak, just so we're fair for everyone's time. Uh, any of the boards have a question? I was going to ask if you had a handout of this, because some of it, it just wasn't very clear to me. I do know geographically where everything is, um, but a handout would be convenient, you know, to catalog these type of things going forward. Bring any handouts, but I certainly can provide them. And the presentation is here. If you if you want to copy okay. that, you can get them. Yeah. And, and we can work with Steve. Um, okay. We have great relationship, and he can send us the uh, PowerPoint. And we can have that available if people would like to pick it up. So. Are you interested in maps, or what are you interested in? Um, I'm just interested, like what you did in the slides. If we had a presentation, like a handout that that delineates that, and then what's currently on the 10-year plan and and monies that are allocated. So a lot of that was in your bullets. Okay. Sure. We can uh, provide that for you. All right, thank you. It's good to see you again. And you. Uh, I do have a question on the Thomas Edison group right there. Now, if I look at Bruce Woodbury, it's two miles and it feeds a lot. That's where all the water's coming. Is that going to be channeled into that storm drain? And who's responsible for controlling that water that comes down Bruce Woodbury. So I'm sure what we'll do, we'll, we're gonna do a, a, a detailed design for the whole area. And so we'll look at water coming down Bruce Woodbury. Um, if there is water coming down, we may put some inlets, an inlet tree in there to capture that water and get it into a storm drain and get it into the detention basin. Our goal is to try to collect it and get it into the basin so it'll be detained there. And then, you know, a detention basin works by taking a, a large amount of flow and it holds it and then releases a smaller amount of flow that that pipe actually under Casino Drive can handle. And so it'll all be underground downstream of the detention basin. So we are planning on collecting the, the runoff coming down Bruce Woodbury and actually the runoff south of that. There's a pretty kind of a berated wash that goes south of uh, Bruce Woodbury we'll be collecting as well. 
Well, I'm glad to see that being moved up because it's been a ma major concern for years. Yeah, I will point out that we're kind of doing things a little out of order here. You know, all of our facilities are based on gravity and <laughs> they all kind of rely on one another. And the reality is we really need the stuff upstream up, up west of Needles Highway for everything to work right. So there is an, a chance, a remote chance, that if we had a huge storm up there without those facilities and we have Thomas Edison in the ground, that that basin could get overwhelmed. And it's not gonna fail, We're, we'll design a spillway for it, but that spillway could activate if we had that huge storm event before we have a chance to get those other facilities built. But the reality is this basin is gonna provide a lot of protection to the resort corridor along, off, along Colorado River, and it just is a, a better use of the money. It's a, better to get that done quicker than it is later. I agree. Madam Chair. Yes. I have a question. Um, wouldn't you say like a lot of this has changed focus because with the monument now that has changed the whole parameters. You're dealing with unknowns and so the money that was originally allocated for flood control in Bridge Canyon and that area had to be, you can't, you can't do appropriate estimates when you don't have the ground rules and that monument has fundamentally changed that for you. Um, so you had to kind of rethink the process into the more exigent, which is why it's out of order now. It's, it's definitely a factor. I wouldn't say it's the only, the only reason, because I think there, it's not a fatal flaw, because we can move that basin downstream of the monument, but it, it was a factor in deciding you know, what, how to move forward right now. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully we'll be able to work with, I think it'll be BLM, the Bureau of Land Management will be the agency we have to work with to try to get the rights to go on that property to do a basin. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully that'll work. Another option, and we've been talking to our lobbyist in uh, DC, is, is seeing if we can just shift that monument. You know, it, it has to shift to the west about a quarter mile or something. Half a mile. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a long shot. But I would follow up in the building. We're not going to get anywhere. Bigfoot may not move. Yeah. yeah. OK. Seriously? So, you know, we can move the basin downstream, like I said, and move it out of the monument, but the further downstream you go, the more the, the flow spread out as it comes out of the mountain. And so we're gonna have to have collections to get that water into the basin, which is gonna increase costs. And, you know, it's much better to build it where it's proposed, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Our, our hands okay. are tied here. Okay, and Madam Chair, another question. Sure. Um, what is, so I, I recall the five-year period um, for the master planning. What is the um, process and the input from the community? Um, I seem to not recall, you know, what involvement you've had from the local Laughlin community. There are people in this community that have been, you know, instrumental in your, developing your flood control through decades. Um, are they still involved in that or do you hold public meetings or? Um, they are, all of our, the tenure plan is adopted through a public hearing, a public meeting, and so uh, you're, you're welcome to to uh, voice your concerns there or your comments or questions. Um, we, ha we do work with the local people here. Mr. Wilbury has uh, mm -hmm. been pretty helpful uh, in determining what needs to be done and where and, and, and helping with the people along the resort corridor as well. So um, uh, in terms of reaching out, you know, really it's that public, that public hearing is the, the best way. And are those held in Vegas or here? They are. Vegas, yeah. And so um, you can talk to our, uh, someone in our office and find out uh, when those are going on. And usually, you know, we work very closely with the public works departments. And so our best information usually comes from the maintenance people. They tell us where the problems are because they know they're out here cleaning the stuff up. And so we usually talk to them about where the issues are and that helps us inform, you know, where to put facilities. Uh, the, um, Master plan hasn't changed much down here, to be honest. It, it's uh, been pretty set, and we haven't had to add many facilities to it, but uh, we just need to get those facilities built that are on the plan. Yeah, it's just we used to have committees, um, and I chaired Public Works. I know Fred did. Um, so we used to have committees, and in that time frame, I've been here about 22 years. So in that time frame, we did attend those meetings. But it seems since our committees went away, I, I just, we just don't get the, you know, the communication that indeed those meetings are going on if there was any input we had to bring to the community so if, if we could maybe 
rekindle that through Tammy's office or through Tammy and, and forward that to any of us on the board if we'd like to attend. Because we often get people that approach us and ask us, especially when that event happened. Um, you know, a lot of the video of the water overflowing electrical and stuff was sent to us. And they're asking us, you know, what, what are we doing about this? So it'd, yeah. be, it'd be good. Like I said, it used to be that we uh, on our committees would go to those meetings, but we just aren't aware of them. Yeah, I've, I've spoken at the Public Works Committee a couple of times, and, um, you know, if there was some way, if there's some better way to do it, you know, let me know. We're happy to, to interact with you anytime and talk about what's going on and what we're planning here, so, yeah. So it's just something for this board. It's going to be starting again the end of this year. So because 2024 is your next year, am I correct? 2019 was the one that's current. 2024 is the next one with public meetings? That's correct. So the, that's the master plan update. So we'll be working on that to develop any changes to the master plan that need to be made. The 10-year construction program, the programming of facilities is every year. So every June we're, we're approving that. Okay, so it's based on um, the fiscal year, uh, June 30th, July 1. Okay. All right. Great. Madam Chair. Yes. I'd like to <clears throat> piggyback on what uh, Kathy was talking about. And I have attended Zoom meetings here. Um, and I think that should start to be incorporated. No offense to Mr. Bilbray, but we are the town board, and I think we should be informed. So if we can let Tammy know, we can set the room up for us to attend those meetings and have some input. And I would certainly volunteer to do that. We, we do have a citizens advisory committee too that meets every <clears throat> month. Um, and oh. those are appointees by uh, either the Board of County Commissioners or uh, one of the, the commissioners that are on our board get to appoint those. And so that's a good way to stay informed. It's a big ask, though, because you really have to go to Las Vegas every month. So that's a pretty long drive. But um, you, can, you can call in if you, uh, if you would prefer. But if, some, if a citizen wants to get on the Citizens Advisory Committee, that's a great way to stay in tune with what we're doing. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay, we'll open questions up to the members of the audience. Remember, you are limited to three minutes and it will be enforced. Robert Bilbray, 1631 Cal Edison Drive, Laughlin, Nevada, it's B-I-L-B-R-A-Y. I'm here representing the uh, Laughlin Economic Development Corporation. Um, we all saw what happened on on the 15th of March. Uh, I've been here 45 years and I counted back and this is the seventh, seventh event at the same location that we've seen over the last 45 years. This, this was much more severe than anything, obviously. I wanted to reach out and give credit to Steve Parrish and the Flood Control District staff and, and to Dennis Cedarberg. A, they set up and arranged meetings to address this immediately to see what was what was available, what funding was available, and what the design time would be available in the middle of the $330,000 $330, job being done upstream at Bridge Canyon. And um, as the board knows, uh, every flood control project in this town was built with special improvement districts. Um, biggest being Heiko, unnamed wash, Dripping Springs. Um, I would expect that uh, part of this project and its overall blending will be um, uh, also a special improvement district. Um, again, uh, you know, within, within 60 days, the Flood Control District and Public Works worked together diligently to do something I thought they would never, ever in my lifetime do, and that's put downstream improvements ahead of upstream improvements. And that's the direction we're going. This is one of the very unusual circumstances where you can justify what we need at Thomas Edison in the de detention basin, by the way, which is also now opening up an opportunity to the community to discuss with the Las Vegas Visitor and Convention Authority, um, who's been waiting for probably a decade and a half or two decades to finish the design of our special events um, lease with BLM. And uh, I'll do everything I can to, to meet with Steve Hill and, and the LVCVA and the, and the hotels to see 
exactly. Let's m move on with that design at, at Thomas Edison because this, this site work is going to be the site work for the special event center. Um, that's how massive this is going to be. My understanding, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, we were looking about $9 million estimated budget for, for, the, for the Thomas Edison. God, it was only there two and a half months ago. Um, about a nine month design time, I think. Yeah, nine months. Okay, can, uh, if I can ask, what, what is the remaining time left on the Bridge Canyon wash to get to preliminary design so we'll see it? It's close, I know. About six weeks. If you could get those down to us as soon as possible, that would really be helpful. Anyway, I, again, uh, you know, it's not often I'm standing up here giving accolades to, to an agency, but um, this one, we really owe, owe it to Steve Parrish and, and Dennis Cedarberg on how they ad address this. I think we were all terrified on what we saw on March 15th. So, you know, when I saw eight inch rocks rolling across Don, uh, Bruce Woodbury, I, I've never seen anything like that before, right. so thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments, questions? Okay. Well, I want to thank Mr. Parrish for coming down and, and addressing us today. Thank you very much. We look forward to those dates on those meetings so we can join in. <clears throat> okay. Let's go ahead and move on to receive a report from Will Smith. He is not available today. Number seven, receive a report from Jason Bailey, of Big Bend Water District. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Jason Bailey with the Big Bend Water District uh, with our monthly report uh, for the month of June. Uh, total diversions were 270 acre feet. Uh, year to date, that's 1,367 acre feet, slightly down uh, from the same time last year. Also, I know a, a few meetings ago, Ms. Oaks asked if, if we would uh, report kind of the monthly daily average of, of production. And just a reminder that the, the treatment plant was designed at, at a max capacity of 15 million gallons a day. Uh, for the month of June, it was about 3.3 million gallons a day. Um, I also just wanted to, to report there was a, a reported leak on, I believe it's Ruffed Grouse Way. Uh, our distribution crews were out there this morning uh, repairing the leak, and so some residents may have seen some trucks out there uh, repairing that. But I, I believe that has been uh, fixed or near, near being uh, fixed at this point. Um, also, I wanted to remind uh, everybody, and I know this was announced last month, that the Big Bend Water District uh, we'll hold an information meeting tomorrow in this room at 2.30 p.m. Uh, all interested parties are welcome to attend. Um, the focus will be on storage and development. I know uh, the past couple months, especially last month, there were a number of questions and concerns from the board regarding storage and development. And so we will have a number of our executive team uh, the t decision makers, our engineers, directors down here, uh, providing some information on the system, on future uh, development, and also here to ask or answer, excuse me, any questions that you may have. Um, I know last month there were a number of questions from, from the board. I have sent those questions and concerns on to them, onto our management team, so they're uh, aware of those questions that you had and are prepared to answer them at the meeting tomorrow. Um, and so with that, I would just maybe recommend that any, any storage or, or development-related questions maybe be held for that meeting tomorrow. Just I think it will be a higher value to, to save those for the appropriate personnel here. Um, with that, that's my, my report for this month. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Just a reminder that meeting will be held here tomorrow at 2.30 for anyone who wants to address any issues that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to number nine. We receive a report from Maria O'Brien with help of Southern Nevada. Chair Haas, you, you skipped uh, Parks and Rec. If you want to go back to it or if you want to. Yeah. Are they here? Sorry. I don't see Parks and Rec. 
Do we have someone from Parks and Recs to give a report today? Okay, and there's information in the back if anyone would like to get it on your way out. Okay, Maria O'Brien. <laughs> Hello, my name is Maria from Help of Southern Nevada, I drove from Las Vegas, uh, O-B-R-I-E-N. I'm from the weatherization program. We install energy conservation measures at no cost. It is an income-based program. We can help repair, replace HVAC units, weather stripping, broken windows, uh, water, uh, water heaters, refrigerators, doors, locks, uh, solar screens. And then I'm not sure if you guys have, um, do you guys have Southwest Gas out here? I'm sorry, do we have what? Southwest Gas Utilities? Yes. Yes. Okay, we also have a Southwest Gas Utility Assistance up to $400. Okay. And I brought flyers uh, with the new income guidelines. I don't know if I brought those last time I was here. And some applications, if you would like me to leave some applications for the library or for anybody that's here now with an agency. Do you have those in digital format? Um, like I the, could email them, but no, they're not. Yeah, they're, they would still be printed out, but. Yeah, they um, could, yeah I, could, I could email them too. I, yeah, I believe I, I gave you my information. Yeah, and I've had a few requests too from local realtors and banks that see people that could use some of these programs. So if you could email it to me, they could print it out and give them to their customers. Okay. Or email them to Tammy maybe. Yep, okay, nice. I have, yeah, yeah Tammy's email. Is Thank best. you. Now, all the services on your flyer, those are available here in Laughlin? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Laughlin and Searchlight, Boulder City. Okay, and do we have these in the back of the room? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So the information flyers that we're looking at are also available in the back of the room. And how would these resources get here? We have energy auditors. Once they're approved for the program, an energy auditor goes out to the home. We tell the client that the application is good for one year, and the energy auditor determines what items the home needs. So they drive okay. out here. How about some of this holiday assistance, um, workforce services, family housing services, homeless response teams? How are they going to get here, or how do we get? Those uh, folks do I that reason. Out. I work for weatherization. We do have eight other programs, so I don't know if they have transportation for people out um, to get to help us Southern Nevada to get any vouchers or bus passes, things like that. But I can find out. The holiday programs uh, is the turkey, turkey and fixings in uh, November, and then the holiday uh, for Christmas, uh, presents and gift cards for 3,000 families. Okay. So if I call this number that's on here and I have someone who's in need of one of these services, they should be able to provide it, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. And we do let clients know that the application is good for one year, but we do have emergency services. So if they're out of AC in the summertime, or if they're out of uh, cool um, heat in the wintertime, it's 48 hours that an energy auditor will be out into oh, the nice. home. Okay. Cool. So their application's pulled no matter. It's not a first come first serve basis. It's a point system. Point system. So points are determined by seniors, which is over the age of 60 families with children uh, under the age of six, income, so uh, the poverty income guidelines, uh, 200%, um, and uh, someone, somebody with disabilities. Okay, okay. Great. Any questions? No, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Well, let's receive a report from Jackie Wallen for Laughlin Chamber and Laughlin Tourism. Hello, Laughlin Town Advisory Board, and thank you for having me today. We'll start with the Laughlin Chamber. We are still keeping the $500 gift certificate open for radio advertising for Murphy Broadcasting for all new members. It's been 
been a great addition and people are actually really taking advantage of it. Ribbon cuttings. We did the Colorado River Historical Society Mu Museum upgrades. They put an interactive garden in the back and redid the inside with new shelving and new artifacts that also include the Laughlin side of the river. Uh, we did it on the 23rd. Laughlin uh, Ranch pool upgrades. They redid all the pool. They're still working on the gym. But on that day, Eric Fox, owner of ProFit Kitchen, announced that he purchased 50% of the ownership of Laughlin Ranch and is now on-site manager. Um, the other 50% the other manager is not on-site and far across the country. So Eric Fox has taken over management of that. And he, if you know Eric Fox, he's also opening a ProFit Kitchen in Fort Mojave and in Kingman. But that restaurant will not be ProFit Kitchen. He wants to make sure everybody knows that. Pink Box Donuts opens up in the Edgewater on the 29th. They've been very uh, gracious uh, to our communities. They've been delivering boxes, uh, pink boxes of donuts all over the place uh, on the Arizona side and Nevada side. So if you're having an event and you need a box of donuts, make sure that you contact Alex and I can give you his number. Colorado River Women's Council is celebrating 60 year anniversary. That's where most of us uh, went to a leadership camp and um, graduated a long time ago. <laughs> but um, the women are still, women and men are still benefiting from that leadership camp and learning about government and our first responders and how children go to school. Simple things that you don't think that you don't know and then you get in there and find out that those kind of things you don't understand at all. And it's great to get that um, knowledge and knowledge base in the back of your head and become a, a mentor for other leaders that are coming up. News West Publishing will be opening up their new office, office on the 25th. Good Morning Needles is going to be on the 27th. Needles Chamber of Commerce, now that they've moved into El Garces, um, they are got a new administrator, and they're getting their proverbial stuff together, and they're starting to become a real chamber. Um, they're actually calling themselves the Gateway with Spike and doing a lot of great things down there now that they have uh, tax revenues that they have. Um, and the Warm Sea Heart Cath Lab is going to open on August 1st with the ribbon cutting. Uh, yesterday, we had a Quad State Chamber Alliance quarterly meeting. This was the first time Laughlin got to host it, and what we concentrated on was community champions. There's not a lot of rural communities like ours um, that come together so much. When we need help, we call Kathy, we call Kathy, we call everybody, and we say, what you got to help? And everybody just says, this is what I got, and we all come together and get it done. No questions asked, just do it. Um, and a lot of other rural communities don't have that. And we wanted to show a great example of how we do it. We had a lot of the volunteers there. A lot of people were asking questions about how we recruit volunteers, what we use them for, um, what kind of standards we set. Um, and then we talk about how our community events always include others other nonprofit organizations, service organizations, and veterans. Um, we talked about Meals on Wheels a little bit. We talked about how we helped during COVID to deliver meals and groceries from the store, and everybody just shook their head. And they can't understand how tight we are um, as far as a volunteering-based community, and how many services we provide without even asking for a penny. So it was really nice to show off a little bit um, and get everybody on the same page as us. Those people that attended, um, we got to go on a, uh, we met at the Riverside Resort, we went on a River Passage taxi and we went over to Grand Celebration and of course everybody's jaws dropped when they got to see the inside and outside including the galley, the restrooms, the flight deck, all those kind of things. It was amazing. Then we had speakers, um, Diana Fuchs from the Riverside talking about the history of Laughlin for those who didn't know. Jen Ronan talked about the chamber influence on businesses and how nonprofits and women's council help with all the things that we do. We had Kent Divich talking about real estate and his philanthropy efforts. Lance Ross talked about the future of the airport um, and he did a really good job. And then I spoke about my heart, um, how many things I'm involved in and how we all get together to take care of those who are less fortunate. And it was a great day. Food was perfect. They got to come for free and Chamber footed the bill and it was a great afternoon. Thank you, Fred, for attending. The attendance was 50. They came from the Utah-Arizona border. They have a new chamber there, trying to get the people coming in to get, make sure that they understand what's available to them in amenities and opportunities for recreation. Um, Chloride, Bullhead City, Kingman, Needles, Parker, and Lake Havasu all 
um, participated and it was a great group and everybody got to share during the round table portion. We talked about legislation, water issues, real estate, and volunteering opportunities. The next network breakfast is gonna be um, the last Thursday of, last Friday of this month on the 28th, and of course it's gonna be by Pink Box Donuts, Alex, and he's gonna tell us what his philanthropy pro promises are to our community and how he's gonna help with nonprofits in this area, making nice. sure that everybody gets to enjoy some of those donuts. Um, kids love Pink Box Donuts because they make the poop emoji donuts. <laughs> so you can get your poop emoji. <laughs> in pink and brown and all kinds of colors and kids flock to those kind of things it makes it fun uh, and they do all kinds of special kinds of donuts too so uh, look out may, you may have a face on one someday uh, the next one after that is going to be Farm Bureau Insurance by Melody and she'll be on August 25th the Laughlin Chamber of Commerce events that are coming up are of course our annual Tri-State Mega Mixer is coming back on August 25th that'll be at 5:30. Um, that's free space for anyone who wants a 10 by 10 space inside of the pavilion. It's $20 to get in for people who want to come in. Anybody that participates in it too pays $20 because that is a donation towards Feed a Family program. That's the start of the Feed a Family program that is um, spearheaded by the Aquarius. And then we have Community Achievement Awards coming on November 4th. It's going to be a big weekend because Rod Stewart's on Friday and Community Achievement Awards is on Saturday. <laughs> so get your dancing shoes on. Um, we're taking nominations, of course, right now. That's open all the time. It takes about five minutes to complete a nomination form online. And I am also taking interest to, interests from uh, people who want to be judges on the panel for Community Achievement Awards. If you have interest to be a judge, just send me an email. My email is right there, and you can um, be interviewed with the rest of the judges that may want to participate. Our members are 304. Laughlin is 31% of that, and since we just started July, we do not have any new members um, during this month. Volunteers and partnership opportunities are coming up with Sam Hunt, REO Speedwagon and Sticks, Rod Stewart, the US Open Bass Tournament, which is looking at to be a Right now, it's about 220 vessels and 440 anglers. Um, I'm hoping it's going to make a big impact on Casino Drive and in the area for some economic impact. Then, of course, we have the Laughlin Bullhead Air Show coming again on April 6th. I do have to make an announcement. I got notice yesterday that the Nevada Department of Tourism gave us last year $40,132 for marketing purposes only. I got confirmation yesterday that they're giving us $75,000 nice. this year to go towards our marketing budget. Our marketing budget was $80,000 last year. This year we're planning on $160,000 in marketing budget. This last year we went to drive markets. Um, people who would drive in or normally come up this way in their vehicles. Now we're going to reach out and go to all the southwest, including as far north as Washington State and Canada, and all the way down through Colorado and New Mexico, trying to get some of those people to fly in um, with private planes. The whole fly-in um, experience is really, really good for private pilots, and see if we can get some special shuttles from Vegas for those who want to fly in. And that, of course, just in case we don't have scheduled service, which we're working on really hard. So that's an iffy thing going on there. Um, I think that's all I have to report on that's new for you. I'll entertain any questions, or I'll move on to LTC. Oh, we can move on. OK. LTC, Rockets Over the River, was a big success again. Um, several videos were captured this year, including Mr. Bill Bray did a drone video that was just marvelous. Um, we have offered it to Las Vegas Convention and Visitor Authority to highlight how big our Rockets Over the River program is, and he did it all the way down the river. So you can see every resort, all of Bullhead, and all of the resorts in the same video, and he did a marvelous job, and it's to great music, and I think it's a great marketing tool. So we're passing that on to LVCVA to do with what they want. Excuse me. This year we did a message to the sky. I don't, haven't really announced it before, but we did this year. We got 13, we selected 13 participants to put a message to their loved one on the rocket shell prior to the detonation. And those went up at a certain minute and second with a description of what that shell would look like, whether it was red, white, and blue, or a dahlia. Um, those are kind of weird 
descriptions, but that's what you look for. And then we sent a picture of the message and the video to each one of them afterwards, and I can't tell you how amazing those people feel that they really sent a message to the sky for a loved one, and they feel some closure, and we're getting some great um, responses from that. We would never advertise those responses, but I want to tell you, I think it affected a lot of people this year when they were kind of depressed and wanted to have a final goodbye, and it was just beautiful. So the Wand Fishing Tournament is August 16th through the 18th. It's midweek, remember, so we're these are weekday um, tournaments because we don't want them out on the lake on the weekends. It's too busy. So they start early in the morning and come in about th between 3 and 5 o'clock for weigh-in. The Laughlin Bullhead Air Show is going to be on the 6th, but Friday uh, we're promoting a STEM program where we will have presenters and interactive stops for NASA, SpaceX, private air, commercial air, um, air traffic controllers, all that stuff so our children, our students, 7th, 8th, and ninth grade can go over there and experience with a lunch and a mini air show. We're having the older students help escort them and make sure that they set a good example for them in a place where they should be grateful for the exposure that they're getting. And our students here don't have a lot of ex exposure to aviation, and we need it. We're shortage on pilots and air traffic controllers right now, so we're going to make sure we make an impact in our area. Just think, one of our kids might be going to space someday. So, um, townwide concerts coming up are Sam Hunt. These are the ones that are supported by LTC. Sam Hunt, REO, Speedwagon and Sticks, and Rod Stewart. That is my LTC report for the day. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Thank you. I want to remind you, Fred Doton's birthday is on the 25th of July. <laughs> the secret's out, Fred. Okay, let's move on. Number 12, receive a report from Tanya Brown with the Laughlin Library. She is not here today. Okay, we receive a report from the Laughlin School System. Mrs. Estes is not here. Okay, number 14, announcements of upcoming neighborhood meetings of county and community meetings of or events. Do you have any? We have none at this time. I want to read an email that I sent out. Um, I had just had a recent conversation with Wes, who is the creator of the Laughlin Labyrinths behind the Tropicana and on Cal Edison Way. It's a great place to visit. He plans to retire from the desert and move in September and asked me to reach out to our community to discover if there is any interest in ensuring that the site receives some modest maintenance once a month. If you have not seen the Laughlin Labyrinth, you can go here, go there to see, at visit Laughlin um, and the website and watch a video from PBS Outdoor that we did a couple years ago um, during one of their visits. The site is unique. It's sought after by those that believe in the left, the left brain, right brain, uh, stimulation effects for people, provides a diverse option for residents and travelers to exercise outdoors, and is fun for the whole family. It's right here in our backyard. Right now, there is, I don't have anybody stepping up to see if they could take a month. The monthly um, maintenance is just to go around and make sure that the weeds are sprayed or pulled, and to make sure that any vandalism that's there, they move the rocks back into the labyrinth space to make sure that it stays um, there. But we get calls at least once a week. I can't say how many really because I'm not out front, but those labyrinths are a destination. People come here on, from the labyrinths websites that I've posted in some of those emails. They love it. There are nine labyrinths there. They all prove a different right brain, left brain um, solution to your thoughts and to things that you want to do. Like the one that's a diamond is like, I mean, the triangles like on your dollar bill. It's a prosperity one, and you just keep thinking about those kind of things. You have to have the right um, frame of mind, but I'm really looking for help to make sure that that doesn't go by the wayside, and if every organization can pick up one month a year and take volunteers out there and just make sure that it stays pristine, um, then we don't have to tear down all the labyrinths and the signs and the creations that everybody's made to add to it. So if you have any questions about it, you can reach me at the chamber at 702-298-2214. And if you want to be a volunteer, we'd be more than happy to take 
um, your work, your little hands and feet to help us work it out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to, we have planning, we have none, planning and zoning, and we have no general business. So this moves us to the comments by the general public. A period devoted to comments by the general public about matters relevant to the board's jurisdiction will be held. No vote may be taken on a matter not listed on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Please step up to the speaker's podium if applicable. Clearly state your name, address, and spell your last name. If any member of the board wishes to extend the length of the presentation, this will be done by the chairperson or the board by a majority vote. Do we have any public comments today? Karen Kirshner, 3279 Del Monte Street. This is in regards to the last town meeting, which I could not attend, but I did watch on TV. First of all, Monte Del Sol is a really well-maintained community of 147 residents who manufactured homes, not EDE trailers. Uh, the board should be aware of this because this is part of your community. A good portion of the residents there are retired, and some of them are snowbirds. To expect us to have to go to Vegas to fix a problem and drive over 200 miles, pay for expensive gas, drive home late at night is not right. Not in this day and age with Skype and Zoom, which should be very helpful to all outlying communities. Searchlight, Laughlin, okay. Now, I'm here because of the variance that was uh, passed, uh, denied last week and got sent up to Las Vegas. Code enforcement classified this building as a workshop, not a shed, and it should not have been approved. Fire protection never inspected this property for hazardous materials. There are loose electrical cords, propane tanks, scattered debris lying around and inside the workshop. These pictures were provided to you by court of code enforcement. We do believe this is a fire hazard and there's no approval for the electrical wiring that was put into that shed. Uh, the HOA never approved an architectural request. Um, so that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Anyone else? Robert Bilbray, 1631 Collison Drive, Laughlin, Nevada, B-I-L-B-R-A-Y. Um, I wanted to let the board know that uh, um, both I personally and I believe the Laughlin Economic Development um, Board is interested in reopening what was one of the community's best bonding events, and that's Laughlin River Days. Um, as, as a special event, everything with the parade, with, with the carnival, I've spoken with the, the owner of, uh, with Coker Ellsworth and also with Darren, our, the owner of the market, and uh, I think it's time all the way down to the soapbox derbies that we, we try to create the same bonding image that for so many years the Laughlin River Days provided us. Um, I've um, taken the liberty to talk with Metro. Obviously, the largest cost involved is the security for the parade. And, um, and those items, but I did want to let the board know um, of you know our, our efforts in that regard and what, what we're going to try to do. That's all. Thank you. Any other comments? Hello, my name is uh, Captain John Burks with the Salvation Army address at uh, 1461 Palmer Road in uh, Bullhead City, uh, last name B-I-R-K-S. Um, I'm just here to uh, let you know that my wife, uh, Captain Misty, and myself uh, are the new Salvation Army officers at the Corps in uh, Bullhead City, and it's actually Laughland as well. We actually go as far down 
as uh, Fort uh, Mojave. Just trying to remember all the names. Uh, we've just been here for two weeks, and so I just want to introduce myself, uh, let you know that uh, we are available. If, you, if there's any, any needs in the community that you might see, the Salvation Army might be able to help. Uh, we're more than willing to uh, cross that bridge and, and, and help. Um, that's our hope and that's our heart and that's our desire is to help all those in need. Uh, we don't like to, the South Shore doesn't like to reproduce um, services, uh, but if there's a, a greater need, uh, we'd be more than willing to help where we can. So I just want to let you know and uh, hope, uh, hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Chair, if we could just ask, he'd leave his contact information uh, with this, with Tammy. For the, if you could leave your contact information with Tammy. Yeah, with our secretary, Thank because I, that way we'll have it for the future. Okay, do we have any comments from the board? Okay, seeing none, we will move on. Our next meeting will be August 8th, 2023. And I'd like to have a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Aye.